Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And today we're gonna to talk about what is the problem with this red pill ideology. But if you guys are new to the channel, it's the first time seeing me. My name is Tom, I'm a life dating coach. And uh, if you guys like, subscribe to the channel, I do appreciate it. So let's get into the video. So the first question we have to ask yourself, what is the red pill? So this whole red pill, blue pill stuff originally comes from the 1999 The Matrix movie. You take the blue pill, the story ends, you wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill, you stay in Wonderland, and I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. Red pill represents a choice between the willingness to learn potential an unsetting life, changing truth by taking the red pill or the blue pill, remaining the contented experience of an ordinary life. This red pill narrative came from the controversial influencer Andrew Tate look at a lot of the pure, pure red pill content, I don't really see any hope there. It, even if they don't re mean it to be, a lot of it is so negative. It's framed from mm -hmm. such a negative perspective. Exactly. And he was also arrested for human trafficking about a year ago. The truth will unravel itself as time unfolds. When people are discussing red pill and blue pill, people typically see one of two points of view. Feminists are outraged by his existence. You know who Andrew Tate is? Yeah. Don't tell me you're some Andrew he Tate said, fan. He said that. Don't he tell said me that. you're some Andrew Tate fan. He said this. Do you not agree anymore? Yeah. Andrew Tate. <laughs> of course he did. Do you like him? <laughs> no. So you don't agree anymore? No, I still agree. You can still agree with someone who is a terrible person. You, you think he's a terrible person? Well, yeah. Why? Because he's sick. I have to eat Subway. So Goodbye. Is there no reason? Claiming he's a misogynist who enforces the norms of the patriarchy and hate against all women. But others, typically young men, see him as a role model and that are frustrated in today's fast-paced, superficial dating arena. This red pill community agrees that the modern feminism has ruined dating and relationships for men. But it's fair to say the court system is against men and can be destroying their lives when divorce does happen. But we could all agree dating apps have made it seemingly impossible for the average guys to get a date compared to the quote unquote high status males. I struggle on dating apps too. Unless you're fucking top 10, top 20% dude on dating apps, you are playing Russian roulette with your self-esteem if you're an average dude every fucking cylinder chamber whatever is fucking loaded it's not a maybe that your self-esteem is going to get fucking crushed it is a definite men in today's society would say it's incredibly impossible just to find a decent woman get married have a family like previous generations did if men wish to have a partner it feels like the man that need to reach a certain standard in financial physical, mental standards to have a chance in even dating. Someone who sees himself as red pills, sees those dynamics in society and improves on oneself. Following these ideologies seem to increase the chances of finding a partner. In contrast, the blue pill are those who do not share the point of view. They're the beta males, they're the feminists, they're the progressives, they're the last, etc. All through the entire volumes can be written about the red pill or the matrix subscribers. It remains contented in an ordinary reality. See, one of the problems with the red pillars is that they show that how they can get into relationships, but never maintain one. And they seem to paint all women just seeking for a high value male or the man with all the money or the status or the looks. More importantly, this red pill advice is given to the internet that is advice for your non-average male and the same advice given to the majority of men who will never obtain that certain lifestyle or success and sets unrealistic ideologies to men who are already lost enough. It does work for some men with that kind of high status, but majority of men that are lost, confused, don't know what they want, think this is how they're gonna get somewhere, it's just not realistic. The solution doesn't work for everyone. That's the majority. Adopting this mindset to think that women, all they care about is money, looks, power, but it's not true. Even quote unquote, a traditional woman would even agree that good people do exist and you have to just go find them. What I would agree with and I would support is motivation to going to the gym, focusing on yourself, being the best version of yourself, being you, being original, working hard, 
providing for your family, being accountable, being respectful, finding the truth and understanding in life, which I find is necessary. So these red pillars point of view understanding is when asked the average woman what an ideal man is and their answer is, and typically say, a man who makes over 100K, a man who makes a million a year, that doesn't mean that, you know, that's who they'll actually end up with or who they're actively looking for. It's keyword ideal. Looking for in a man, if you can like find the ideal man, you find the needle in a haystack. 6'3", consultant, if you're watching this finance bro. Specific yeah. career. Um, lives in Los Angeles, has a house in San Tropez, has connections at the club Lake Hop. Yeah, and is also just great on paper, intelligent, funny, witty, we match with. Yeah. So you're looking for like the full package. Imagine asking the average male, the ideal woman. They would probably tell you Megan Fox, Jennifer Aniston, but it doesn't mean it's gonna happen. Even though all the majority of men, young men, would look for a girl like them. I would say an effective leader is sensitive to the needs of others in an authentic way. Leadership is understanding people, strengths, weaknesses, and respecting their own personal boundaries, as well as enforcing your own. It's from these qualities that create real success. Now it's okay to have your own opinion, your own preference, but at the end of the day, you should really evaluate your own situation and perceive life the way it is in the present time. I don't agree with in the red pill community is the same advocates will claim that a man with high status is acceptable for a man to cheat most of these men that you're talking about, they will have a, an understanding. So it's not going to be an open relationship. The wife just eventually just comes to terms with what's going to happen. And they'll keep it behind closed doors. True. They'll do it sneaky. They'll do it on business trips. Yeah. And they'll just keep it quiet and then just come home. And, uh, or she, she might find a pair of panties in the car. And then she'll throw it away if she's a good wife. She just won't but are you proud? Are you proud of that? Cheating on your girl? Am I proud of it? Yeah, like you're acting like it's something that I'm not saying I do it. Be proud of. I'm saying that this is just the nature of the world. This is what happens with guys who are mated. So you think all guys cheat? Every guy cheats. Every guy wants to cheat at least. Every, no guy is naturally monogamous. Which contradicts itself only because they want monogamy on her side of the relationship. But how is that love or genuine? Because if you truly understand a good, healthy relationship and everyone should have a basis of how this works, but relationships are a two way street. Okay. And you know, do what you wish, you know, be monogamous. If you wish, if that's the standard to your relationships, or if that's your grounds for the relationship you want, that's fine. But I find, in those type of relationships, they're not happy at all. But I've also heard that people who are in open relationships tend to be the happiest. I can for sure say one thing, communication is key. And early dating, three year dating, married, that's how it works. That's how relationships are formed. That's how it works. If you guys can communicate a good, stable relationship about your feelings, your thoughts, whatever, you guys will die together. Communication is the foundation of a relationship. But anyways, what also annoys me about the red pill community is these red pill figures give people the social skills they need and the real world skills instead of complaining about society. Yeah, society can be bad, but evolving is important also. That that's life but it's not always the problem. If you're a lonely male and you ask yourself, is it society's fault or is it my schedule? Maybe the problem isn't the women or social media or dating apps or the way it is. You have to ask yourself, how much actual effort are you putting yourself out there to meeting people? More importantly, are you meeting these people or going out in healthy, good environments? Are you going to the bookstore for fun? Are you getting coffee by yourself for fun? Are you going to the bars for fun? 
the gym, art galleries, maybe not so much the bar, but are you going out? Are you doing anything? What are you doing? The biggest advice is find things that you're into. Do things that you're into. If you're continuously, consistently putting yourself in places with the same group of people over and over again, that will be the key to developing relationships, friendships, opportunities, because you never know who you're gonna meet. You need to put yourself out there and not focus on what's in your head and the there there. That's not even there. You just stop overthinking and start practicing talking to males, females, just people. Make yourself a regular. Find places you like being in, but try avoiding places that involve alcohol. It will do most of the work for you. Just doing more things, giving you more experiences, will give you more things to talk about and relate with, with other people. Like I said, you need to put yourself out there. You need to make time for these things. Put it in your schedule. Try going out two to three times a week, which is small things, doesn't have to be, you know, crazy experience every time. If it doesn't work out, if it's, you know, you're out for like an hour and it's not your thing, there's always the other night. But try to make it a thing where you're, trying to go out and actively meet people. The important thing is, is learning how to talk to people and learning how to like break the ice and just, like I said, learn, like learn things, learn how to socialize, learn how to meet people. Now, if you continue with this and stay consistent with this, the places that you end up going to, you'll be known as a regular. And then once you start seeing the same people over and over again, for me, faces, the time after time, new doors will open, relationships could open, potential paths could open. And if you do all that correctly, you'll never need to put yourself out there anymore. Like it will just be a matter of time until you go out and you start just bonding with everyone because you know this person from that person and that person and this person. And then next thing you know, you're living your life. When you go out, try instead of thinking of how can I have the best night? Start thinking, how do I get to know everyone in the room? Because like I mentioned earlier, you never know who you'll meet. You never know what kind of connection they have or anything, anything's possible. Now you might feel rejection a thousand times. You might go through breakups a thousand times. You might feel lonely at times, but no figure on the internet. No one is gonna change how you feel or make you feel like you've discovered a new you. Everything you go through is completely normal and it's a normal human emotion. These red pill ideologies teach these superficial ideas of how true genuine relationships are formed and not teaching you how to maintain one and how to respect them. My advice, put yourself out there, connect with others. Like I said, don't listen to some guy on the internet. Don't listen to these people that live completely different lifestyles compared to you. Just because they're successful or they're high status doesn't, isn't going to help your situation. You have to attack life from where your life's at. You have to take the bull by the horns. No one's going to tell you how to do it, but that is your job and your life, how to figure it out and do it. I support looking after yourself, focusing on yourself, doing the best for yourself. But anyways, guys, that is all for this video. If you watched all the way to the end, I do appreciate it. Hopefully this sheds some light on this red pill community. I'm Tom, I'm your life dating coach. And if you guys are new to the channel, please hit subscribe. I do appreciate it. Please like this video too, if you do want to support me. I do appreciate it. I will see you on the next one, guys.